uh, our dear brother and sister. Today I am so excited, and uh, because I have some something interesting that I want to share with you. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see. Bible University of the Universe. We are going to present something. We are going to present love to learn, and under love to learn, uh, we have the topic. Uh, why do the infant cuckoo bird act like that? Uh, of course, you know uh, you don't know act like that. What does it mean? Act like that? I, I have I have a video to show it to you today, so that you will understand. But before that, I want to give you a brief introduction. And the video today is so interesting and is so uh, so good. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, this video is has to do with the birds and especially the cuckoo bird. We call cuckoo bird. Uh, whatever the mother bird uh, look around the surrounding and found the nest so that she can lay her eggs. And she's so smart, smart enough that she look for the net and look for the net that uh, it happened that already has three eggs in the nest. So that with her, she lay egg in that nest. So make four now, make four eggs now. And then after she lay the egg and she uh, fly away, and gone, and never come back. So, and the mother bird of the uh, of the original, uh, uh, you know, original nest, and and three eggs. Remember, and this mother bird came back and uh, hatch the eggs uh, without notice, without. And she doesn't care how many eggs she has uh, in the nest, but uh, she has the eggs. And pretty soon, and the eggs, uh, it's just amazing. It's just, you know, only one egg uh, came out, the baby infant birth. And I guess the three eggs, not, uh, not the time, to come out yet, but anyway, so only one egg that cracked, and the baby infant infant bird came out, and this infant bird, the eyes of the bird had not opened yet, and the feather has not completed, and that the wing there's a wing, but you can see the the muscle and you can see the bone, but without the feather yet, but. This baby baby bird is uh, so clever. Uh, try to get rid of the three other eggs, and she did. Uh, and he did successfully to get rid of those eggs. But from this uh, this video uh, is so so useful uh, to to let every one of us. After you watch it and you will think about it, so what's going on and why it it happened like that, so you can see that uh, the selfish selfishness and the ill responsibility of the cuckoo bird. And okay, uh, I would let you take a look at this video. Just next door. In an even smaller nest, the female reed warbler incubates its four eggs. One of the brood is starting to hatch. However, it is not the young reed warbler. Two weeks ago, a female cuckoo, unseen by the reed warbler, dropped her egg into this nest. Now the young cuckoo hatches. As the first of the brood, the reed warbler did not notice the trick and now feeds the young as if it were its own. The young cuckoo needs to throw the other eggs out of the nest. If it doesn't do this, then the parents will not be able to feed all the nestlings. But 
but the first attempts are not successful. The cuckoo is still too weak. It tries again. It must push the egg above the edge of the nest. It is a big effort. The determination of the weak cuckoo nestling to get rid of the competition is amazing to see. After a few hours, it has another go. This time, there's some success. The first egg landed in the water. When it throws out the second egg, the cuckoo almost follows it out of the nest itself. Now, for the last one. Alone at last. The ever open bright red beak and the constant peeping from the cuckoo prompts the reed warblers to bring it food without a break. Now all the insects and spiders end up in its beak. With such intensive feeding, the young cuckoo reaches its adult size in just two weeks. It is so large that when it sits on the nest, it must hold tight so it doesn't fall off. In a strong wind, the nest may even break apart under its weight. Although the cuckoo is by now much bigger than the reed warblers, they still treat it as if it's one of their own nestlings. Even after it has left the nest, they will still feed it. At the end of August, the young cuckoo will start its lonely journey to Africa. It will return next spring, maybe even to the same reed bed, and try to toss an egg into a reed warbler's nest. So from this video, we can see, uh, <clears throat> you know, the selfishness and irresponsibility in our nature, in the animal, and uh, this is uh, something that God allow it to happen. So just to remind us that uh, this is uh, because of the sin that uh, make not just human being but all the surrounding the animal all affected by uh, sin. So that even in the animal we can see the selfishness of uh, character. Uh, in the animal world. So, uh, also, this to remind us that God, Jesus, come down to this earth, try to help us, to redeem us, get out from the sin. Uh, so, he even had to sacrifice himself so to die on the cross so that we be able to uh, be redeemed. So, uh, Let's see our scripture here. Our scripture here saying that in Rome 3.23 said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when we say uh, for all, that it means not just human being, our, uh, the animal world, the, the whole world is being affected by sin. And, uh, and then, and uh, so when we are aware of that, so Jesus said, now let's see the scripture. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. What, what Jesus saying is, if we want to get out of sin, we have only one way, and that way is Jesus' way. He said, I am the way the way to take us out from sin and to take us to heaven. So Jesus said 
it is truth, right? I am the truth. What I am saying is will be truth, and and the truth will take us to heavenly, uh, everlasting life. So, uh, so this is the message. May God bless everyone. Thank you.